Well, welcome back to another video on LT Spice. Um, in this video, we're going to focus on two things. One is called the step command, and then a, a way to um, to chart the waveform after we've done the simulation. Um, so let's. Uh, the assumption is at this point you have installed LT Spice. You have a working knowledge of how to use the different uh, features of it, including simulation and all of that. In this uh, video, we're just, just going to make that those assumptions that you're up and running, and then we're going to go to the next step, uh, just uh, coincidentally called step command. And, and the question is, what, what is that and how good it is? For example, I have a, I have a circuit here, and I'll just start by putting a number in here, and let's say, it's 500 ohms in here, and we're gonna run this thing, and this basically will look at a current flowing through here, and this current's dividing into these. And yes, I can simulate this, and let's say I run it uh, using, again, DC, um, DC simulation, and when I run it, uh, the result comes up, and I can go over these different things and see kind of what's the voltage in here. As you recall, all the information appears here, probably the, probably the easiest way to look at it. So I go over here, the voltage is 1.4 volt. The voltage here probably would be 1.4 and 1.14 here as well. And then you might want to know what the current in each one of these branches are, and you look at that. And then, so that's great. You can put a constant in each one. You got four milliamp coming in here, and you know what all the currents are through here by looking down here as you have your cursor move over these things. We've done that in the past in the earlier uh, videos, such as the introduction to LT Spice. And if you've forgotten, you can go take a look at those. What if I want to know? Um, let's say I want to look at um, the behavior of this circuit over a broad range of frequencies, uh, of not frequencies, but different values of resistor, R, RL, R1, R2, really doesn't matter. But let's, let's take a look at RL. That's when we use the feature called step. The, the step is, is called the step command, and it's one of the directives there. So if you want to use something like that, where you want to look at your circuit, uh, where either one component or multiple components are changing their value. You want to look at like 30, 100,000 different values of that and see how your various the currents and voltages in your circuit behave. Then you use the step function, a step command. So the way you do that, let's say, let's say I decided I want my RL to change and I want to see how my circuit behaves as RL change. So all you have to do, go to the value section, use a curly bracket open, and then put some variable name. You can call it R, you can call it X, you can call it Z, you can call it whatever you want. And for, for this purpose, I call it X, okay? So now, in my instead of having a specific value, I have X in here. Then what I can do, I can go up to the menu, this menu here. This is called the SPICE directive. As you can see, the pop-up tells me what the name is. So I'm going to click on this thing. We're going to get a blank space. But I'm going to say basically, I'm going to put a dot. That's, a, that's telling the PSPICE I'm about to give you a command for you to do. And you say, OK, I want you to do a step command. And I want you to take a parameter, P-R-A-M which is parameter x and i want you to take this x value started from 100 move it to 10k so it's going to move it from 100 to 10 and then step it every 100 okay so what it's going to do is going to run your circuit once for 100 ohm next time for 200 300 400 500 all the way to 10,000. In this case, ohm, because RL is put to ohms. Later on, when we talk about capacitors, inductors, and other things, you can do exactly the same thing with all those components and get a range of uh, values there. So now I have specified my directive. And if you notice, it gives it to you. And I'm going to just going to put it right here. Why not, right? Um, just so uh, you got to put it someplace on your circuit, so I'll put it in here. By the way, if you don't know what this is, this is just the text. I just use the text and put a text value in here. That's all that is. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it so it's not distracting. Okay, so here's my circuit. I am uh, playing with this thing. Now I want to see what happens when I, when I do the simulation. So I'm going to run the simulation. 
uh, I had already run this simulation. Actually, let me do this. Let me back up. And I'm going to basically delete delete the simulation. So let me maximize this. So, so it shows you how the process works. So I'm going to remove the fact that I've told them what kind of simulation I have. So we'll run it again. I'm going to run my simulation by clicking on run. And then it comes up and asks me for what. In our case, we always, we've always we been running it for the first few uh, of these, ex these uh, type of um, videos. We are running it as a DC um, point, DC operating point. So we're going to say OK, and that puts it back in here. And when you run it, the screen comes up. Now, if you remember, we can look at the current through here. We can look at the voltages up here. You can look at whatever, whatever you want to look at. And the easiest way to do that, to look at different things, is to right click. And it comes up and you say add trace. Each waveform is called a trace. And I say add trace. And you can see, I can let me pull this up. I can look at II1, which is the current through here. I can look at IR2, this current through here, current through here, current through here. Voltage is not very exciting, but if you want to take a look at voltage, you can do that. That's how I kind of designated it because voltage gets a little hard if you don't put a label on it. Um, so it automatically knows I'm doing steps. So automatically my X or the horizontal axis is going to be set to this, okay? And uh, you can right click in here if you want to change the units or whatever, whatever you want to do. You can do that uh, for if you, if you choose, if you don't think the labels or the ticks are not in the right place, just change the value of it and then it'll take care of it for you. Actually, let's just change this to 100 ohm and see what happens. Okay, so that's all I did. And you can do other things with it as well, but let's not get trapped in here. So I'm going to add a trace. I'm going to go over here and say, you know, I really want to know what happens if, as I change RL, what happens to the current that flows through RL. So all I'm going to do is do this. Click on it and say, okay. And it's going to say, okay, here's RL. As RL increases, as RL increases, that current comes down, okay? So, so it starts at 3.6. If RL was really, really small, probably would be exactly at 3.6. But starting at 100 ohm is somewhere between, maybe I don't know, we can, can kind of put the, put the cursor on it and get exact value on it as well. But, but let's, uh, let's say this is, this, is the, this is the curve I'm getting. Now let's say, well, I also want to know what is the current through um, through um, R1. So all you simply do, you click here, add a trace, and I want to look at current through R1, and let's see what happens. Okay, here is, and then it's blue, it's kind of hard to read, but the value is here, see? And then um, there, there, there we have it. And by the way, if you wanted, if you wanted to kind of figure out exactly what values this is taken on, for example, I was guessing there, all you do, you click on, the, 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 the curve you want to know and the cursor appear and you can grab that cursor with the right, uh, with the left click and then move it. And as you can see down here, they'll tell you the exact value for the horizontal value and the vertical values if you need to do that. You can have, you can click on this one, move it up here and just kind of see what's happening here. So this was actually a three point, look like we got a 3.5, rough 3.478, whatever at 100 all. Okay, um, that's good. Okay, that's a second cursor, but I don't know why I got that. Anyway, so um, so that that's where we are. And um, again, I can change the color. I just that was playing with this. If I don't like the green and I want to go some other color, I can change this to whatever other colors uh, I want. It. I'll change it. Nothing exciting. So this are it. Oh, that is current is not the only thing you can look at. You can basically look, click, right click on uh, the curve, and it gives you add trace, and you can go to the add trace, and you can any component voltage or current. Now in this case, it's kind of boring because there's only one voltage, but let's plot it. We'll do the voltage here and say okay. And as you can see, that kind of does a behavior is a little bit different in that as the as the um, resistance goes up, the voltage goes up. That kind of makes sense because I got a current source. If you look here, 
I've got a current source, uh, and of course, as you, um, as you, as you um, increase the voltage here, then the combination voltage of these gonna be higher. So the same current gives you a higher voltage. So, so what we've done here, basically introduced this whole concept that you can take your component and give it a range of values and run your simulation and see what happens as, as the circuit goes through, as the component goes through different values, what happened to the circuit. And as you notice here, we did a step our step was starting at 100 ohms and going to 10k ohms with, um, with um, every step being 100 ohm. You can change this to any value you want and the processes then the next, when you go to the simulation, you say what kind of simulation you want to do. In our case was a DC operating bias, that's fine, you run it and then uh, you, get, you get the curve popped up and you can pretty much add any trace you want to the list, okay? So that's that's the process. That's more or less uh, what, I, what we wanted to cover in this uh, video. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for listening.